everybody and welcome to the Daiwa Foundation. Uh, my name is Jason James and actually I'm sort of chairing this evening. Uh, so this evening uh, we're talking about Abenomics, which has been a hot topic now for a little over a year in uh, Japan. And uh, I'm slightly distressed to see the subtitle here, which, which suggests that perhaps you don't have a very uh, positive, uh, no. <laughs> positive outlook about it. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll hear about that um, in a moment. So our speaker this evening is Professor Harukata Takenaka. Um, he is based at the National Graduate Institute for Policy Studies in Tokyo. And having originally studied law at Tokyo University, he then took the well-trodden route into the Japanese Ministry of Finance. Um, but he, his time at the Ministry of Finance was relatively short, and he's mainly been an, an academic. Uh, he got a PhD uh, from Stanford, uh, and is the author of a number of books about um, the Japanese political process. And the focus today, as I understand it, is very much on the so-called third arrow of uh, Abenomics, and the political blockages and so on that make it difficult to fire that arrow, right? So, over to you. Okay, thank you very much for hold on, kind introduction. And, uh, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, I think uh, it's an honor to be able to speak out of, in front of the audience. And so let me start. Just Okay, so as you know, waiting for that third arrow, it says uh, waiting for Bodo by something. You know, you, I think you are familiar with you know, waiting for Bodo. You know, two people are waiting for Bodo on the first day, and they are not sure if they are waiting for Mr. Bodo at the right time and at the, at the right place. And at the end of the first day, a boy uh, who, who identified himself as a, a messenger of uh, Mr. Bodo comes and tells two people that Mr. Bodo will come next day. And the next day, two people are waiting again for Mr. Bodo. And at the end of the second day, again, the same boy comes, Mr. Godo will come tomorrow. Okay, so um, I, we have heard um, the Abenomics has been um, kind of, um, has received a lot of attention. And the Abenomics, and it has been successful so far, as long as, you know, the GDP growth rate is concerned. It, um, in the, the last day of DPJ government, the performance of Japanese economy was not so well, but it picked up after the beginning of, after uh, with, the, with the formation of a cabinet in uh, December 19, uh, 2012. And um, so is Nikkei stock index. It, I think it closed at the end of the, uh, last, yesterday it closed with uh, 147700 something, but it's still much higher at the end of uh, the BJ government. And so, and um, it comes, we, we are very familiar, I think, here, all of us here are pretty much interested in Japanese politics, I guess, so people are familiar with what the three arrows are, but I just do. To, 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 to confirm what they are. The first arrow is bold monetary policy, the second arrow flexible fiscal policy. And that is um, Prime Minister Abe appointed Governor Kuroda. Um, Kuroda San is governor of Japan in March, and um, new governor introduced so-called quantitative and qualitative monetary easing, that is, he loosens monetary policy, he increased the, money, the amount of money, and that caused uh, depreciation of yen, as well as a uh, hike in uh, stock price. And also, uh, Prime Minister Abe formed form the supplementary budget, huge supplementary budget, which is 13.4 trillion yen. And that gave obviously gave a boost to the Japanese economy. And today I want to focus on third arrow, which is growth strategy. And from the very beginning of launching of Abenomics, Prime Minister Abe always referred to the fact that Abe is his economic policy are consisting from three arrows like the first, second, and the third. And the, the why I I refer to 
waiting for Godo is that he always, he has first, at first he said he would give a concrete plan for the third, third arrow by June uh, 2013. And uh, he, I think, and he also said that he would announce uh, the third arrow in three sequences towards June 12, uh, 2012. And I think he started out, he, you know, he came up with the first plan, I think, at the, at the beginning of May, and uh, the, and the second plan at the, at the end of May, and probably the third, third, the third plan in um, June um, 2013. And people did not, people kind of, people did not appreciate these plans well. And uh, many people said they were disappointed. And then Prime Minister Abe said, no, 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 the real one comes in fall. Okay? And uh, he came up with several bills, which I, I'm going to cover soon. And, well, people, I don't know how people evaluate the, these, these bills, but at the, at, in, in when, these bills were, when these bills were under discussion in the Diet, and when the this Diet um, and when the Diet finished uh, their session at the end of, I think, in December, Prime Minister Abe said, you know, now the real one comes in, uh, in June 2014. So he consequently refers to Third Arrow uh, is planned. And to be fair, he, Third Arrow is a very difficult one because it consists from many different policies, covering many different areas, many different policy areas. Sometimes yeah, it, co it covers um, tax policy, it covers education, it covers healthcare services, and also it, has, it, it also uh, deals with uh, employment policy, and what else? And it also deals, it has to deal with agriculture, and also city planning, and so forth. So, um, he cannot do everything at once. So it has to, it is reasonable that he puts uh, these policies in sequences. But the question here is that some, the question is just, is it, we are like, are we really, <coughs> waiting the real third arrow, or do you end up like these two people waiting for Mr. Godot, that the real stuff never really comes? And that's the question I want to um, go over today. And the reason, and what I want to stress here is that our Prime Minister, Japanese Prime Minister, has much more, has to be faced with much more political impediments to carry out economic reforms than uh, British Prime Minister here because of political structure, the difference between political structure between Japan and Great Britain. Put it simply, Japanese Prime Minister has to face, has to face, has to confront with a very powerful diet. And um, Japanese diet is structured in such a way to sometimes um, a backbencher can have a veto power over Prime Minister's uh, important legislation, which is unlikely to happen in this country because um, I, I, I explain that later, but uh, this country, uh, it's, we have decentralized political system, decentralized diet, in which um, committee has a strong power over legislation. Whereas in your country, committee, you adapt committee system too, but committee does not have so much power, and everything is ultimately uh, has to be determined by plenary session in the parliament. And uh, that makes a huge difference. And, uh, okay, so I have, and the third, so let's let's review what has happened so far in our third arrow. 
progress. Tax reform, well, people, people are still unhappy with reform, but it's still a reform. I think it's a progress that we have, the Japanese government has decided to lower corporate tax rate to um, by three, three points, uh, from 38% to 35-6%. It is still much higher than your rate here, which is 20%, and I understand that British government is going to lower it even further to 18%. And then uh, we had uh, electric service reform. Uh, reform bill finally passed about three months ago in the diet session, which is going to fully liberalize our electricity service market. This is a huge step uh, about uh, I think this is a huge, very good, there is going to be a huge change in how electricity is going to be uh, is, is the service in electricity market. And the liberalization will be complete by uh, 2020. And the other major step, uh, major progress uh, is agricultural reform. We have finally decided to eliminate cartel to reduce production rice, as well as subsidies to cartel participants. Uh, this is so-called um, Gentang's policy. Uh, that is, the Japanese government has been subsidies to, to farmers who, who, uh, who accept the quotas of rice production set up by the, by the Japanese government, uh, regardless whether these farmers are competitive or not. But from now on, uh, I think there is more competition among rice growing, uh, <coughs> rice growing uh, agricultural farmers, and so the price of rice will be uh, reduced. And the other thing is, the other progress is national strategic zone, and um, the Japanese government, I mean the Abe Prime Minister Abe or Abe Cabinet, passed through a legislation called national strategic zone. The purpose of this bill is set to set up. Uh, to, to, to specify some, some areas of Japan as a national strategic zone in which uh, deregulations will be, uh, will be allowed. Some exceptions to the existing regulation. The, in, the, in, um, in these areas, the government will permit exceptions to the current existing regulations. And um, so far, the government uh, is, 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 going to, uh, is going to make exceptions to the regulation on construction plan, cons in, on development, on city development, so that uh, much higher buildings, much higher uh, buildings can be uh, constructed than before. And uh, for medical services, some high-tech, high, uh, medical services using high technology uh, will be allowed to be practiced in some areas. And I know, uh, if you are familiar with Japanese um, economic policy formulation, this is, uh, this was not, um, this was not enough. I mean, the original plan was much more ambitious, but because some, some department really resisted to accept, to accept exceptions, so this is not as uh, a progress, as significant as expected, but uh, probably Prime Minister Abe will increase the menus of exceptions from now on, but um, I will go over that soon. And I think here there are a lot of people in, among the, uh, those who are present here often go to this is Tokyo, of course, like Mizuno san just came back from Tokyo yesterday, I understand. He, did you fly from Narita Airport? Yes, I did. Probably this would be the last chance for you. Yes. So you have no, that you have to back tomorrow. Uh, next week. So. Next week? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, but from March 30th, you can fly to Haneda Airport directly from London Heathrow, and there will be four four flights. Mm -hmm. And this, well, I don't know why Prime Minister Abe did not mention this in Davos conference because there are many Europeans who are uh, if the, and. Um, who probably sometimes visit Tokyo, and who often see uh, get get headaches in arriving in Narita Airport because it's so far away from the city of Tokyo, uh, the center. And uh, there will be direct flights from Paris, Munich, 
and Frankfurt uh, and London uh, to Haneda Airport. And this is really a plan implanted under the first Abe administration. And uh, it took a lot of time because we really had to expand the Haneda Airport. You know, we constructed the fourth, fourth runways. And but the fruits, you know, uh, the, 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 the seeds, seeds uh, implanted in the first administration bore the fruit of, uh, you know, this more convenient flight. And um, so, but little progress has been made against so-called Ganban Kise, which is um, bedrock regulations. For example, you know, the Prime Minister Abe has been referring to the necessity to reduce corporate tax further from the very beginning of his, his tenure, but it has, well, he, what he meant was he wanted to reduce it beyond 35%, but it was not being um, achieved, you know. And corporate governance, okay, corporate governance, some politicians in the LDP feel strongly that corporate governance of Japanese companies has to be strengthened. And some politicians in, propose to introduce non to, to make not it propose uh, that to make uh, to introduce mandatory non-executive directors, but that is to make non-executive directors mandatory. Companies has to make uh, have to put non-executive directors, but this met this met uh, kind of uh, not strong opposition but hidden opposition from uh, Japanese uh, business companies. And LDB decided not to put this clause in the bill. Okay. And the employment, okay. This, the, the Prime Minister Abe tried to deregulate regulations on layoffs. Okay. And uh, especially in that, the aforementioned uh, national strategic zone. And his idea was to, to basically liberalize employment rule for those people with masters and PhDs. Because he thought, or well, what they thought was that you guys have PhDs and masters, so you should be able to market yourself to good companies. And if you lose your job, that's your fault. Okay? So introduce competition among these uh, master degree holders and PhD holders. And the idea, see, like what they said, what they tried not to to do was to liberalize the employment rule for blue workers. For example, in some 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 rural areas of Japan, there is a big factory which, for example, produces 80 percent of employment in that city. And if you deregulate, then that would be a huge problem for these people who cannot really move. But that was not the idea. But mass media reported that the Japanese government is planning to liberalize rules on layoffs. And um, special zone, and they came up with a cat, they uh, came up with a catchphrase, special zones for layoffs. Okay. <laughs> and so government backed down and uh, these reforms were not implemented. And the other thing is, well, it's still impossible for a doctor to practice. Well, I checked, but since I, before making today's presentation, I checked whether American doctors can practice in London. And I thought I could not find evidence that American doctors who do not have permission from the British government cannot practice, uh, can practice. So, well, maybe Japanese regulations are not that tough. But what the Japanese government have been trying to do is that to, to invite foreign business to encourage foreign business to make investment in, in, in some some in, in, in some part of Japan, I think some assistance to Prime Minister proposed or suggested him that we should enable uh, foreign doctors who have license from I don't know in the United States or here or, e, uh, or uh, countries in, in European Union should be able to practice. And that kind of makes sense because if you are Romanian you can practice it in France. I think it's, it's I think it was liberalized under the EU Accord. And so, um, but this was this made a strong resistance from uh, Department of uh, Welfare and uh, Health, and so it was not 
it, it, was not, it, was not, it has not been made possible yet. And agriculture. There was a discussion that uh, we should liberalize uh, land holding, um, uh, farm holdings by private companies. Now it is okay for private companies to hold agriculture uh, farms if it is the, its, its share is 49%. But he cannot. It, it, it's, uh, it, the majority has to be in the hands of farmers. Okay. And this was prohibited. And uh, it still uh, it met a resistance from small farmers. And so it was not implemented. And evaluation of uh, some progress made, well, as I said, there is an issue of presentation. For example, the reduced subsidies for farmers, it, the LDP did it so well, so that um, all of a sudden it made a, a small announcement. And so it did not really catch the eyes of the journalists. It did not become the, it did not come to the headlines of newspapers. And so I don't think many foreigners noticed this. And also, Again, under expansion, I think I, I think it's a very big progress. To uh, as, as long as Tokyo is concerned, to uh, invite uh, foreign visitors and foreign investment and foreign business, but uh, for some reason the government did not sell this so well on um, to the foreign uh, correspondents. But some obvious failures, as I've said, I think it's, it's reasonable um, to 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 allow some um, in limited area in limited section of Tokyo or limited part of Osaka to allow foreign doctors to practice and if they have permission from if they pass the examination in the States or Britain I think you know we can expect and some some Japanese all the way go to I don't know, I, I was at Stanford well not only Japanese but many Chinese or Southeast Asian people came all the way to Stanford to receive the high tech surgeries and um, so but then the question is the question is why these reforms are not implemented and I uh, my understanding is that well Prime Minister Japanese Prime Minister probably is one of the weakest has been one of the weakest Prime Minister in the world you know since the end of the war but the Prime Minister's power has been strengthened since the end of 1990s because we have implemented a series of reforms starting with 1994 electoral reform which which we in, in which we which changed our electoral system from so-called SNTB single non-transfer vote thing system to the fast passport system and um, it's complicated but under the old system one electoral district shows uh, three to five politicians. And for the LDP to share majority within the diet, it had to run several candidates. And so that sometimes um, LDP elected, like uh, run uh, four, four candidates in, 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 in a district where the quorum is four, when the, when the, where the size of the, so the, comp the, 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 the to, to win, the election, you have the LDP politicians had to for, for, had to fight against each other. So what they did was not to run on the party platform, but they ran. They they tried to get reelected by cultivating many many personal votes by going in, going to drinking party by shaking hands, you know. <coughs> and what they did was since they cultivated personal personal votes. They did not really have to worry about party endorsement in the election, and uh, they always could run as independents. So there was no penalty. I mean, the, the biggest penalty for the party leadership to discipline party is that to, uh, to, to withdraw whips, I think, in British sense, uh, in British political jargon, uh, which will withdraw endorsement from the party or kick you out from the party. But in, in Japanese case, even when you withdraw whips, you can always get reelected because you are you are you have your personal funds and you have so many personal votes. So the in the previous 
electoral system, the prime minister really has no way to keep discipline of the party. Okay. But that changed. Now it's Japan is fast passport system. You really have to have the endorsement. And here, I under, if I understand it correctly, conservative clubs has, have a lot of power to, this, uh, to determine who will be the candidate for the next election and so the Labour local, part, uh, Labour local committee. But in Japan, I think the party leadership has more, much more power now whether they will withdraw the whips or not. And so that will be a huge, huge threat for, for uh, members of um, politicians of the ruling party. Okay, so the Prime Minister's political crowd vis-a-vis -vis backbenchers have increased since then. And there was a <coughs> ministry reform of 2001, which really, I don't, I don't want to go over this uh, because I think I will run out of time, but this basically increased the legal, author, legal power of, of, of Prime Minister to formulate policies and as well as staff and organizations supporting Prime Minister. Okay. But, and uh, people thought, and that these two reforms enabled Prime Minister Koizumi to implement a series of reforms uh, under Koizumi cabinet. But, and uh, most, many journalists, not that many journalists, but at least many political scientists thought, you know, the Japanese Prime Minister's power has been strengthened so that Prime Ministers after Abe will be able to implement other reforms. But as you as you know, we had six Prime Ministers in a row who had only tenure one year. And then we have seventh Prime Minister, uh, which uh, uh, Prime Minister Abe has been has is the is the first Prime Minister who did not resign uh, within I don't know uh, who who could keep uh, his seats more than a year, I think, after after um, after coming to power, since um, Prime Minister Koizumi. Well, that's a kind of shame for our country, but uh, there's a reason. And the reason is, that is, I think the reason is, should be better, if we, I think, to be more clear, if we compare the British political system, that is, Prime Minister's power is much more limited than yours vis a -vis the assembly. Okay, now, British Prime Minister, you, to, to, to carry out reforms, you have to introduce bills. And British Prime Minister, and the government has to introduce a number of bills. Okay? Japanese Prime Minister has to introduce about 80 bills. Here I think the, the number is between 20 and 30 bills. And if you have so many bills, you have to determine the priorities among the bills. Okay? And British Prime Minister can set up the priority, priority among the bills. So if he thinks, for example, electric reform is the most important agenda of the day, he can tell the whips that do this bill first. Okay? And um, whips really fall. And the backbenchers for agendas. And also, British Prime Minister can help the parliament to reach conclusions. For example, if you, after 20 hours, no, I, I don't say 20 hours, for example, 70 days after the summit, I introducing introduction of the bill to the parliament. Okay? And, you said in British in British system you set up bill I mean committee every one com, you set up a special committee for one bill. Okay. In our country there is a standing committee according to the policy areas and sometimes a department a uh, committee has to deal with like seven or eight bills at all, uh, in one day session and I. And this gives a huge difference because what happens in Japanese cases, for example, suppose if there's an electric reform bill which Prime Minister considers important, he can tell the leadership of the ruling of the of the LDP, please do it, please, 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 please uh, give deliberation to this bill first. But he has no legal power to determine the agenda, and it is really up to the. Um, the party bosses, I mean the party leadership. 
who has seeds in the diet. So, and he can, and also, so sometimes <coughs> Secretary General <coughs> of LDB might tell the Prime Minister, since there's a lot of opposition within the party, we might want to spend more time before, uh, even we, after the introduction, but maybe the bill was, might have been introduced, but we might want to discuss other bills first and persuade the others. And also, um, times, time cannot be determined by Prime Minister. Okay? It is really left to, it is, it is really up to the, the LDP as well as the opposition parties to determine how much time, how much, um, how to assign time, how much time to, for, to do, for build the deliberation. And the worst thing is, committee has sometimes deal with several bills. So this really what happened. And so, and the committees, how they discuss how they deal with, how, how they uh, give deliberations to bills in committee is really left to the committee chair, per, chairman as well as directors of the committee who's, who has the power to set agendas and schedule of committees. And so if I happen to be sitting on uh, electric, electric reform bill is discussed under uh, Commerce and Industry Committee which corresponds to the Ministry of Economy and Industry and, uh, and Trade, METI. And I happen to be a director. Okay. I can tell the party leadership that we have, we are, yeah, maybe, see, I, and to tell you the truth, I'm opposed to this bill. Okay. I receive a lot of money from uh, TEPCO, Tokyo Electric Company and I don't want to liberate the market. But what I can sell the party leadership is that we are meeting strong opposition from the, from the DPJ mm -hmm. about the reform. Mm -hmm. Because they have strong labor union uh, who belongs to these electric companies and labor union are opposed to the reforms mm -hmm. as well. And DPJ tells us that they will not come to, to the diet tomorrow. Prime Minister, are you going to? Are, are you willing to um, to uh, tell us to go ahead and give deliberation to the bills in the absence of the opposition, Mr. Prime Minister? And if we can do that, Prime Minister, but probably mass media will attack you that you are being too arrogant, um, seeing that your popularity rate is now your public cabinet approval rate is 50 percent. And so Prime Minister says, oh. So Takenaka-san, maybe you <coughs> might want to wait another day. And, you know, so I say, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> a, a day was wasted. <laughs> so, see, like, you know, uh, the, the day is very important. It's a scarce resource because you have only three, six, uh, uh, 365 days a year. And, uh, you know, that session is 150 days. And the opposition and those who are opposed to the bills in within the majority try to waste the time of Prime Minister and the Cabinet as long as possible. Okay? Well, sometimes I can say, see, Mr. Prime Minister, you know, you might think that um, the electric reform bill is important, but there is another law which I think is important. And I would like to, and uh, DPJ says it's okay to deal with that bill first. So we might just want to go ahead with this bill, okay? And uh, for example, I don't know, um, TPP promoting bill or something. And uh, so, and Prime Minister, if I would, and the, 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 and the other thing is that Prime Minister is too busy. So he cannot, well, if he, yeah, and so he cannot really control the, uh, the daily day, uh, the, the diet agenda. Uh, he the, cannot monitor the diet agendas on a daily day basis. So there's always, always a leeway uh, for the extra sitting on the committees. And so, uh, you know, and also 
British Prime Minister can always prevent people like me to sit on the committee because he has he can nominate who to sit on the committees. Okay? He can just sub, he can just stuff the committees with uh, pro bill sub, uh, pro bill people. But in Japan it's not the case. It's kind of random. Okay? And the other unfortunate thing for Japanese Prime Minister is the second chamber is very strong and it is independent. Okay? Independent meaning it cannot be dissolved. And it has an equal power with the first chamber. And so, okay, there is, if, for example, the bill, the most in, important bill is defeated in the first chamber, you can always call for the general election and turn to the voters whether you support bill, this bill or not. Or you can always threaten the MPs that the Prime Minister is willing to dissolve the Parliament or the Diet if the, this bill is defeated. But you cannot use the tactics for the Second Chamber. So Second Chamber basically can do whatever they want to do without any penalty. So it takes much, much more time to persuade those upper house senators or house of councillors, I mean the councillors sitting in the Second Chamber of ruling party to controversial bill. Okay. Because there's no, there, if you, cannot, you can withdraw whips from them, but they, they, they feel not threatened because, you know, uh, they cannot be dissolved. So these are the political obstacles. And they, okay, that these are the uh, structural obstacles for prime ministers to implement uh, reforms. So, what, what I want to say is that sometimes individual backbenchers can veto legislation so that Prime Minister has to spend a lot of time persuading and seeking consent from backbenchers to support controversial bill. And sometimes he sees that it would be probably impossible to follow through. Yes. The other thing is PD, PM kidnapping the diet. PM attended that session 127 days in 2011, compared with British Prime Minister, 36 days from December 8th to uh, November 9th. I mean, this is uh, 2008 and 2009, okay? And uh, that, and uh, there's a number of reasons why Prime Minister makes so uh, large attendance to the diet. I, uh, uh, and this is the, the, the largest reason is that he cannot set up the time schedule. So that opposition always asks the prime ministers to come um, so that they will cooperate um, to the proceedings of the bill. And so prime minister has to show up um, so that opposition will say yes to, uh, to make uh, judgment, uh, to take a vote on, uh, on bills in uh, diet committees. Okay, this deprives Prime Minister of time to spend to formulate, not only to formulate policies, but to persuade backbenchers. Because he has to sit in, literally he has to sit on the diet, in, the, in the diet committees. Okay. And so, PM Prime Minister has a lot of power, and I think he's the most powerful person in Japanese politics, of course, since he's the Prime Minister. So if he can focus on some particular issues, he can probably um, follow it through. And probably the most in the domestic front, the two policy issue area he attached most importance was reduction of elimination of corporate tax rates. I mean the reduction of corporate tax rate to uh, thirty-five percent, as well as the uh, setting up of national strategic zone. But he has other issues, you know, like going to Yaskuni Shrine, which I don't think, which I don't think he, sh he should spend his scarce political resources on these 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 issues. But you know, he he wants he wants to go, so he went. Or um, um, you know, uh, uh, some some uh, he spent some energy on appointment of NHK uh, directors, and so. Um, he cannot, and okay, right. So that is 
uh, you know, my presentation on the limitations of, on the political class of our prime minister. And, okay, now to see and evaluate Tadaro, and the Prime Minister Abe tells us that he wants to he wants to make Japan most friendly uh, to make the Japanese uh, Japan as a as a country uh, who is most favorable to do business. Okay? And okay, to do business to make business easier, what do we need? Okay, I think it's it's uh, we need to make comparison with other pro-business countries like Singapore or United Great Britain. For example, corporate tax. You know, we our corporate tax, as I said, is thirty-five percent. I think Singapore being like sixteen percent, and UK twenty percent, and the United Kingdom, I think, probably is aware of what Singapore is doing. So I think it's going it's going to lower it further. And the English global language, us Japanese, you know. And human resource, United Kingdom, diverse. Singapore, diverse. You see many countries from many, 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 uh, from many people from many countries. In Japan, I do not say it's not diverse, but not di as diverse as UK or Singapore. Airport, I think airport is really important, you know, in, in this globalist world. And Singapore has been, attach has been attaching so much importance to Chang Airport. It has two runways already, and I think it is go yeah, and um, it's 24 hours. And here you have, you know, Heathrow only has two runways, but you have Gatwick, Luton, Stansted, you know, and also London City Airport. You know, these fronts. I think this. Is, I know the current government is there's uh, some debate over the third runway of Heathrow. Uh, it postponed. I think if I understand it correctly. And your government is aware of competition with, with Frankfurt because Frankfurt is now trying to, I think they are building the fourth runways because their capacity is limited. But, uh, but you know, the situation right here is much better than ours, I think. You know, Haneda exp expansion improves it a little bit, but not enough. And geography, you know, you guys, I think Great Britain, I think, is close to Europe. Singapore, India, ASEAN, Australia. And Japan, what about Japan? China? But as you know, the relationship with China, this West Coast of the United States is if you think of doing business with like Southeast Asia and China, Korea, and California together, Japan is a good place. But you know, if you want to do business with this burgeoning economy of ASEAN, you know, our location is not as good as Singapore. And well, Initially, before making this presentation, I had you know circles and uh, you know process with the regulation, corporate governance, <coughs> but I became kind of unsure. But I think corporate governance, you got uh, Britain has much better corporate governance than ours, and regulation, probably less regulation. Although probably you have some regulation, of course, uh, over city development and so forth. And um, democracy, UK. Well, the only thing I can we can boast is that we Singapore is a real democracy, mm -hmm. and I think that will that matters for innovations and others. But you know, it's pretty much we are pretty much handicapped. So I think if we want to carry out reforms, we have to make this process to triangles and to circles. That is what we need. And so. We need to do is probably we have to do corporate tax reform. You know, we the prime minister has been meeting with strong opposition from initial finance, but I think well, to, uh, the, 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 the issue is how much we lower, and um, but um, I think we, we really have to and probably and in Davos, our prime minister Abe committed to reduce corporate tax reform, and so if he as I've said if you know, he can follow through two of one reform if he, which he considers most important. So if he uses all of his political crowd, probably this would be achievable. Regulation, labor market, medical service, farm and education, you know, we need them. And logistics reform, you know, further expansion, 
we don't really need to, some people say we need to run and uh, we need to build another runway, but what the government really face is some opposition from some people in southern part of Japan. Uh, not the southern part of Japan, southern part of Tokyo, who resist the noise sounds of their police. And, um, you know, and corporate governance reform, I think we need them. Uh, I don't want to specify names of some, com some companies, but obviously um, corporate governance of some, you know, even internationally famous companies have trouble, have problems, and we have to do something about it to uh, invite more investors. So, and over the long term, what we really need as a political scientist is that we need to reform our diet system. We have to uh, change this decentralized diet system to a more concentrated system like Great Britain. And we have to prevent such a situation in which directors sitting in a committee can literally torpedo a bill which <coughs> uh, considers important. Okay. And um, for now, and also, and for now, Prime Minister Abe should be aware that political capital is limited. So I beg him not to make a, may, uh, make a, um, um, not to, um, to, 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 to make deteriorate our situation, <laughs> our relationship with China or Korea. He should be aware that he has. You know, his political cloud is limited, and if he deteriorates China, uh, Japanese relationship with China or Korea, it will have repercussions, and he has to spend some energy and some time to deal with that, which certainly will deprive his time and energy, which he can spend on domestic fronts. Okay, that's where I think I spoke more than I was assigned. I apologize. Okay. Right, thank you very much. Um,